for 50 years, Baja California has been the setting for the granddaddy of all desert races, the Baja 1000. This is the 50th anniversary of the Baja 1000. That's only gonna happen once in my lifetime. We're down here in Ensenada for the great 50th Baja 1000. Over 400 entries and it's crazy. There's hundreds of teams racing in 47 different classes in the 50th anniversary Peninsula run. But the trophy truck class is at the top of the food chain. Boasting over 800 horsepower, 40 inch tires, and over three feet of wheel travel, trophy trucks are the most elite desert race vehicles on earth. This year, motorcycles took off 10 hours ahead of the trucks and are almost halfway through their race. Motorcycles are scary. I wouldn't want to be riding a bike and, and have Robbie or BJ go blow and by. At 10 a.m., Robbie Gordon, in the number 77 trophy truck, is first off the line. Vehicles lead in one-minute intervals, one after the other. Starting in 11th position this year is the number 19 trophy truck of Tim Herbst. 50 years of this mystique Baja Peninsula. I think we've been in them at least 30 of them. My dad was in the second one that ever, you know, happened. To be brutally honest with you, I want to win all Baja 1000s. The first truck went off the line at 10 a.m., Robbie Gordon, and they've been 27 trucks off the line so far. This year's 50th anniversary Peninsula run is over 1,100 miles long, starting in Ensenada and ending in La Paz. The Ball 1000 is the longest point-to-point -point race in the world. Probably the most grueling day of racing you can get yourself involved in. Incredibly rough, but incredibly beautiful. You get to see a Cortez, Pacific Ocean, and everything Baja has to offer, including epic fans cheering you all the way down the peninsula. Racing in the Hammer class is two-time Ultra Four world champion Casey Curry. There's so many good drivers here. Freaking sports amazing, Baja's amazing. Everything about Baja right now, 100% and three-time King of the Hammers champion and off-road Hall of Famer, Shannon Campbell. Probably the start is probably the roughest part of it. You go over through Ojos and, and then hit some of the stuff we hit the last couple of years. Then from there over to San Felipe and uh, hopefully to La Paz. Hopefully I get to see that place. Trophy trucks can take on five-foot wolves at speeds upwards of 100 miles an hour. And in the wide open washes and dry lake beds, some can exceed 140. The trophy truck is like the ultimate dream machine. It should be illegal. They don't make materials on this planet that will survive a 20 hour off-road race. You kind of have to pick your battles. I could very easily break my truck in 10 or 15 minutes just by driving it as hard as I can. Uh, we're getting about 15 miles per hour, uh, full throttle, and done. Copy that. The, I want to confirm that the truck is broken and is heading back and is not finishing the race. Akira at uh, pit three. We just heard they're having some catastrophic failures, electrical components, something to do with the motor. Uh, they're having a hard time uh, getting it fixed. At this point, uh, I think we're done with our Baja 1000 for 2017. So just glad that everybody's safe. And you're in Mexico and you at least expect it, expect it. So if you can't have any downtime, here, somebody's going to make it through. For us, Pat Dean qualified and started, so he and his navigator Shane took off from Ensenada 14th. We just kind of had a plan, just run smooth, run smart, and don't cause yourself any trouble. If you go up to start and drive like a bat out of hell and cause an issue, you've already lost your race. Your race really starts when you figure out who's around you, where you're at, and then you can start stepping up and going. Just really uh, start racing for position. Patience is a really important thing in an endurance race like this. You know, you can't win it in the first 100 miles, you know, so for me, patience is the best. 
the transition from day to night is pretty trippy because really if you've been in the car for a while or even if you haven't, the shadows are incredible and there's people everywhere. You wouldn't believe how many people are along 500 miles of race course. Muy buenas carreras. Good racing. But all of a sudden the Cardones, you know, they're like, it looks like people are waving at you, they're shifting. It's just like plays tricks on you. Like you think you see stuff running around. It's pretty crazy actually. There's a lot of solitude. The dust at night is it's insane, you know, and you turn the lights on and the dust, you know what I mean, it just turns into a white wall and uh, the older you get, the harder it is to still see through the dirt. Then you gotta have that awareness around you that at any second you can get a surprise. Dude, we had a hundred miles of looks. It was insane. The, the terrain was like gnarly, super silty, sandy, water. I mean, we had it all. We have it marked for 85, 100, 105 mile an hour, and you're running through there. You could get a bike who stopped, the truck had stopped. There's so many things that you can hit out there, so it's it's kind of sketchy when you're sitting there just driving. Hopefully, there's nobody in front of you. I don't know. It's, I wouldn't want to ride a bike with me driving. Uh, Weatherman Diablo, do you have any information for Honda Relay, uh, lead bike? 1X is battling it out in the front from what we heard with uh, 45X, who's still in front. While bikes in back of the pack make way for trophy truck leaders, the number 1X bike of Ox Motorsport makes an epic comeback, passing 45X within 50 miles of the finish line. <laughs> This is an 1134 mile race. The competition led for 1,075 miles and I led at the last 50 and it ain't over till it's over. Due to a last minute speed infraction after the race, score officials taxed the 1X team with a 30 minute penalty, setting them back into an official second place. And as more and more lead bikes roll through the finish line at La Paz, Trophy trucks have only made it halfway through their race, rapidly approaching the next pit. 457, what mile are we at? It's only 80 miles away, man. Right now we're sixth physical. We're eight minutes out of the lead on corrected time going through LA Bay. So we're about 20 minutes behind. Anything coming? I'm not sure what's going on, but Cody and I are getting in. Do a brake pad change. Hopefully, uh, have just a great clean run. When I start getting in, yell, don't step on the brakes as loud as you can. starting to show up, so we're uh, getting ready to take this next 300 mile leg and get to Detroit and hopefully we get ourselves a good finish. on the leader is number seven. 40 minutes on the leader is 16. And that was the running order. The last 300 miles of race course proves to be some of the most difficult. Drivers and vehicles power through fatigue in the final sprint to the finish. Many hours after leaving the start in Ensenada, and over 1,100 miles later, the first trophy truck makes its way through the checkered flag in La Paz. Carry on. 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 Carry on
Cameron Steele, our second trophy truck overall on course, making his way not too far out of town. Battling through over a dozen competitors since the start in Ensenada, Cameron Steele locks down the second position overall. You're on the podium right here, second place on official, man. It's got to feel good. You had the two truck effort, you came out, you put your all into this. But right now you're on the podium, man. I'm so stoked for you. To be honest, I can't imagine there's anything else like it in the world. Um, longest uh, non-stop desert race in the world is the real deal. After losing the number 19 truck to a mechanical failure early in the race, Tim and Troy Herbst focused their efforts on their number 91 truck. And in just over 22 hours and 23 minutes, the Herbst team crosses the finish for an official sixth place overall. From the start line to the checkered flag, it was memorable. Very happy to be here. We're very happy to be part of the, the Monster Energy 50th Baja 1000. This year's Ball 1000 was supposed to be easy, so a lot of people get to the finish. It was the gnarliest Ball 1000 I've ever even been around. We passed over 70 guys, is what we think. So we think we finished 29th overall. Started 100th, so honestly, like to do that is pretty, uh, pretty sick. I race off-road because my family got me into it, and the reason why I stay in it for 35 years is because Baja is a part of my family, part of our culture, and the people of Baja are so awesome. You can't really put into words what Baja is and off-road racing, but together they're magic. Spicy margaritas, time to get lit. <laughs> All right, let's go, I'm tired.